and some time lapses. Soreness will go away over time and it'll also go away with stretching. And you can kind of see it as a sign that you're doing hard work. Now, just because you're not sore doesn't mean you're not working hard. Everybody's different. Don't compare yourself to others. Sore is normal and not being sore is normal. Now, if you find yourself more sore, say two days after your workout or three days after your workout, if your soreness progresses, you should really pay attention to your protein intake. That is an indicator that you're not getting enough protein. So just check in with that. Look at what you're eating. If you're a meat eater, then chicken, fish, turkey, beef, lean beef will get you that protein. Eggs, yogurt, protein bars. So yeah, check into that. If you're not a meat eater, things like eggs, beans, lentils, chickpeas, I guess like vegetarian or vegan protein powder, vegan protein powders. I'm gonna drink some water. Cause holy crap, dang it. Yeah, my foot, I'm gonna fall. So don't forget your bands. Don't forget to order your bands and get ready. And you know, maybe if you don't mind telling me what bands you get, leave me a comment. What bands are you planning on buying? What band, if you already bought them, good for you. Let me know you're ready. So one whole week and I'm sure life's gotten in your way a little bit. Um, today, work was gonna get in my way, I knew. I knew in my head, I wake up and I get my workout out of the way. That, that I'll be more successful. I felt something fell. It was a band. You don't stop. You don't stop. You keep going. You have to keep going. I'm just picking that up so it makes things look nice and neat and aesthetically pleasing in the background. Yeah, back to what I was saying is I was worried about being successful today. So I thought if I go to work and I'm at the office all day, and I leave, and I sit in traffic, and I get home, life is gonna get in the way. I'm gonna have to come home and cook dinner, clean up the house, just do all of my duties. I saw that, and I thought, oh, I need, I need to knock this out, because I'm not gonna want to. I'm gonna be distracted, and I'm not gonna want to. Possibly tired from the day. I don't know what's gonna happen when I'm there, how much work. I'm gonna see all that work that I have to do, and it's gonna, pile on top of me, it's gonna stress me out. And so this workout will be great for me before I head into the office. I'll knock it out. It'll be, I can check that off. My daily movement box will be checked. And so I'll probably be more mentally clear, more ready to handle the day. Cause I've had, I already had a lot of water, like maybe 30, 40 ounces of water. I've had breakfast, I'll knock out my workout. And then I can head to the office and do all that fun work I'm just so excited about doing. What's gonna help you be successful or unsuccessful? Like what's gonna get in your way today? And so think about that and like combat them. Hit them head on. Cause there's a balance. And we're all gonna have struggles and we're gonna want to work out some days more than others. And we gotta live too, right? There has to be that balance. Living is a thing. We got one go round here, right? We got one chance. And so sometimes eating the ice cream is living. If to you that double scoop of ice cream is living, then you gotta fit that in. But there's gotta be, there's gotta be a balance. You can't do that all the time. It's different for everyone. And for some people, buying the shoes or buying the purse is living. For me, traveling is living. The more I travel and see the world, the happier I am. When, when I haven't gotten to travel in a while, like right now, I, I feel it. One thing that really, really has always helped me is meal prep, being prepared, planning out my day, even the day before sometimes, keeping groceries, in the house. Once you run out of food, once you don't have any options that's readily available to you, 
right there, you're setting yourself up for failure because you're gonna go for something fast and easy that's probably outside the home. And so just have a plan. You know, try and be as prepared as you possibly can. I typically meal prep a couple of times a week on Sundays. I get ready for at least a few days. And then if I need to on Wednesday, I'll meal prep again. And then, you know, it is hard on the weekends. So I just try to have groceries in the home. I try and get to the grocery store on Thursday. That way we have food in the house for the whole weekend. And I try and sprinkle in some of the meals that necessarily not aren't bad for you, but that we don't need to be eating a whole, whole lot of, like red meat. And maybe I'll mix like some potatoes, like regular potatoes and just stuff to make us feel less food deprived, but I save it for the weekend. So take a look at your food and what you're meal prepping and practice meal prepping. The biggest tip I can give you about meal prep is make a list of what you want to make. Keep it simple. Pre-prep things that make it easier in the week, like chop up all your vegetables. Make overnight oats enough for a few days. I uh, uh, pan fry two to three packages of Applegate turkey bacon every Sunday. It's a staple. We love it. We do not get tired of it. And it's, it's there, even if it's a quick snack. Oh, so check in with our breathing. Whew, crap. I used to do the biggest meal prep every Sunday. I made all of our food for the whole week. I got out of doing that, so I stick to three days. I would like, everybody knew. It was Sunday, stay the F out of my way. <laughs> um, it's meal prep Sunday. I'm most of the time trying to, if it's football season, I'm trying to get done before the Cowboys play. And so, stay out of my way. I was often stressed out. I wouldn't plan anything on Sundays. Birthday party? No, I'm, I'm busy. I'm meal prepping. Cookout? Sorry, I'm busy. Meal prepping. I had to get, I had to find that balance. I had to find that balance. So, three days. It is. An Instapot really helps a pressure cooker because they kind of do the cooking for you. You just kind of set it, forget it, set it, and forget it. And I have two. Actually, I will, I will crank both of them up on a Sunday. Ooh, okay, let's skip a step because I need some variation. I need to switch this up. Ooh. Ooh. Doing a lot of talking today, obviously. Yeah. I just need something to break it up. Something to get me through this last leg. <sighs> Extra side note on the bands. Day 14, day 14, coming up, reminder about the bands. These are the Shinyi Shinye bands. This is the heavy band. This is the medium band. It's the heavy and the medium. They also come in light. I don't have the light. I just have the heavy and the medium, but you can get these on Amazon. These are what I'm gonna use on day 14, move with Missy. Check them out. If you have any questions, please leave me a comment. I'll be happy to help. Look, this, this little rubbery piece right here, these really grip your leggings or your legs. There are so many different bands on Amazon, so just do a search and get what's right for you. Something that's gonna go around your legs, just above the knee. So whatever level that you feel like you wanna start on, that's what you need to go for. Something that goes around your legs, and we're gonna put them on and wear them while we're on the stair mask. Oh, 
college. It makes me feel so successful already. So that's good. Turn around. And if you have any questions about fans, please reach out, leave me a comment. I will, I will help as much as I possibly can. I have been calling around all morning trying to find a hand doctor because about a month ago we were fishing and I caught a fish and I just want to preface this by saying that we have been catching fish all day left and right we were killing them we were smoking them I caught a fish and I just wasn't paying attention very well obviously I reeled him up and I I grabbed the line and didn't even see that it was a catfish. I had, because we fished for crappie, and I didn't even see that it was a catfish. I, it didn't even register with me yet. I hadn't even had enough time for it to click. Oh, this is a catfish. It was pretty small. It's really small, actually. And as I grabbed the line to kind of pull it towards me to take it off the hook, it flipped and it caught me right between my knuckles. He stuck completely in my hand. Completely. I, I freaked out. I was like, ah! Ah! I mean, I could have, I could have flung my hand, and he would have stayed in. He was, yeah, I was wearing a baby catfish on the front of my hand, and my husband ripped it out. And I didn't even, you know, by the time that I made the connection, he, he looked at me. He looked at the fish, and I thought. He's gonna rip it out. He is about to rip this fish out of my hand. I didn't even get to complete that thought. Like that thought hadn't even finished completing processing in my head and he had already done it. That had become my reality. Blood went everywhere. I freaked out. My father-in-law was with us. He grabbed ice out of the fish cooler, straight out of the Sami fish cooler, threw it on my hand and wrapped it up. I'm not gonna lie, I'm gonna be very candid. I cried, I bawled. And I'm not very, I'm not a public crier. I kind of cry on the inside. It's, it's personal when I cry. And so I, I couldn't help it. That was the worst pain of my entire life. I, a month later, here I am, and it still hurts. And thing like this, this right here, that's, that's tender. I can feel a knot in between my knuckles. I can make a fist, but when I squeeze, I'm, it's like I'm weak. Yeah, totally got stuck by a catfish. I caught that fish, and then it turned around and caught me. That was a rough day, it's a total rough day. It did get me out of fish cleaning duty. So, that was good. Ah, okay, this is it's a wrap. And don't forget to tell me how you're doing. Don't forget to tell me where you're from. Don't forget your bands. Maybe subscribe before and after pictures. I hope you have a really good day. Later.